Hey everybody, in today's video I'm going to go over NA errors in Excel, what they are and how you can fix them. So an NA error is when a value is not found in your, in your formula. So it's not available, you do a search typically through a lookup, whether it's XLOOKUP, VLOOKUP, and it's simply not found. And so I'm going to go over a few common reasons that this can happen and how we can fix this. Now, before we jump in, if you're finding these tutorials and tips helpful, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe and make sure to enable notifications so you never miss another video. In this example here, I've got a list of company names and the relative stock symbols. And I'm going to do a simple lookup using VLOOKUP and you can use a different one, whether it's match, the index function, any sort of formula where you're looking for a value you could run into this issue. So I'm going to type in um, the word Microsoft or the name Microsoft Corporation. And I don't have that exact match. I have Microsoft Corp. So now if I do a VLOOKUP using this value and selecting this range, say I want to pull the second uh, column so I get the ticker symbol, set it to false so I've got an exact match. So I've set up my lookup formula correctly but because I'm looking for Microsoft Corporation instead of just Microsoft Corp, it tells me that it's not found. What I'm going to do is select Control C to select this value. And now I'm going to select my range, my lookup range, and I'm going to use Control F to search for that value. So I'm going to search for Microsoft Corporation, find next. And if I get this error, that tells me that it actually wasn't found in this list. So that tells me the problem, that it actually doesn't exist in here. So I either have not added it in there or it's misspelled or it's not spelled the same way. In this case, we've got Microsoft Corp. So either way, it tells me that it wasn't found. So I may need to check through my data to make sure that um, it actually exists in there or that maybe it needs to get added to it. And so if I go through my list and I see, okay, I see Microsoft Corp, then I can adjust it to say Microsoft Corporation. And now I get rid of that NA error. So that fixes it in that scenario. So if you run into an issue where it's, it's not found, maybe do a partial search for just part of the name to see if there's a spelling issue or um, you know extra values, whatever the case may be. But let's say you don't come across that issue and you still have an NA error. What you may want to do is double check your VLOOKUP function because what could happen is let's say I've selected this range, columns C and D instead of A and B. So in this situation, even though I'm looking up the correct value, my formula looks like it's correct. The problem is I've got the wrong range, C and D. So if I do that, I've also got an NA error because especially with a VLOOKUP in this case, it's always going to look for the value in the leftmost column. For example, even if I had B and C, I've got part of my range, but still not going to be a match because I need to make sure that with a VLOOKUP, the first column in the range is the one that I'm searching the values through. So I want to pull this so to make sure that the value that I'm looking for is in this column, in the leftmost column. If it's not, it's going to cause, cause an error. So that's an issue specific to VLOOKUP where it's going to look for the left, leftmost values. So an easy way to check for that is uh, to make sure you're looking at the right range is to just click into your formula because the one thing that's really easy in Excel is to see what ranges you're looking at, what values you're pulling through. We can see this blue value matches this blue value here, this blue cell, um, this red range matches up to this. So it's easy to see visually which cells we're referencing and which range we're looking at by just clicking into the cell. So if I just click on the formula, it's not gonna do that for me. I actually have to click in here as if I were to edit it, and now it shows me the range, and it's easy to adjust this if I need to um, change it, move the range around, or move to, or select a different cell. Now another situation may, which may arise is if we've got trailing spaces in our values. So let's say here I've got Microsoft Corporation, but this time let's add an extra space. And just like that, we've created another NA error because even though the spelling looks to be correct this time, I've got that trailing space and it's not really evident um, by, by looking at this. If I do a search for Microsoft Corporation again, I'll see that, look, it is found in here. So you might be wondering, okay, well, what's the issue? So unless I actually click into this cell and see, okay, I, I noticed that there's a trailing uh, 
space there, then it won't be immediately obvious that there's an issue here. There is one function that can help you. So let's create another field here. I'm gonna call it last character. And we can just use the write function. And the write function, you can specify the text that you wanna look at and the number of characters you wanna extract. But if we just leave this argument blank, can just say the rightmost value, it's gonna show us the last value, the last character in that cell. So if I hit enter, we can see I don't see anything. So that tells me that there's a blank space at the end or some sort of blank character. If I copy this formula down, you can see that for these other values, you know, I have I have a letter in here. So that tells me that there is not an empty space. So in this situation, I can see that there is a blank. And so that's how I can check for it to see that uh, to see whether or not a blank value exists. So there are many types of blank, blank values. So in, in some cases, it might not be uh, clear what the issue is. I, you may have copied it over from another um, val from another page, like a web page, and it has different values. But let's say we're just looking for a simple blank space. What we could do is use an if function to say if the, this formula returns a value I'm just going to use two quotation marks with a blank space in, in between. Then I'm going to say return a value of Y indicating that yes, there is a blank space or just to leave a blank to say, no, it's fine. So that can be an easier way to clean your data and check for it. So in this case, we can say, okay, we don't have any other blanks in here. We just have this one, but this will only catch um, a blank space like this. There's other types of blanks. So that's just one thing to keep an eye out for is that it may not be exactly um, the space that you're used to where you just have a single blank. There's different types, especially if you're copying in data. But this is one way that you can check it. Use that write function and then it'll highlight, you know, what that last character is. And if you put that within an if, an if statement, then you can create a rule to say, okay, that is a blank, uh, blank space, contains blank space. Let's change that header. And so that's a way where you can create a a way to check for this to see if there are any issues with, with our data range that we're looking for. And you could also do this for this value as well, because it could be that this uh, this value is correct, but this one contains a space. So it's important to check both ways to make sure that both the value you're looking at doesn't contain um, trailing spaces and that the value the values that you're searching through don't have them, because that can cause an issue. And as you can see, it's can be really frustrating or hard to figure out why you're getting this an error when you see the value here, you see it here, but there's a mysterious issue why it's why it's not matching. And it's likely gonna be either the, the range you're looking at is wrong or there's th that extra space. I'm also gonna cover another scenario here, and this is where you're looking at numerical values. So I've got item IDs and I wanna look up the item number and get the get the relevant sales for that item. Now, what I've done here, however, is even though these look like numbers, they're actually text. I've added an apostrophe in front to force these values to read as text. And sometimes they can read as text if you're copying them from somewhere else. But if that happens, that can cause an issue with your lookup. So for example, if I type in the number one for my item number and I wanna do a VLOOKUP function, look up this value and look it up on here. Again, creating my, my formula correctly, but I've, I've gotten the NA error. And so this is also another potentially frustrating scenario because you're looking at it. Again, they look like they should be the same, but this is an actual one. That's a number. This one is a text value. So there are a couple ways that you can check for this. And we can use, um, what I like to do is, especially if the lookup values look like they're correct and they should be matching, a simple way to check is just using, uh, selecting the cell that you're looking up and setting it to equals the value that it should be matching to. So if it returns a value of true, that means they are a match. If it's false, they're not. So that tells us there is an issue here, whether it's an extra space or whether the data type is not the same. So what we could do is use the type function to say, okay, look at this data type and that tells us it's it's one, which indicates it's a number. The type function selecting this value tells us it's a type two, that it's a number. 
So that's one way you can ch you can check for it. If you if if you don't want to remember the the different um, different codes, then you can also use is text to confirm is this a text value, which is false because that's a number. Is text for this one will tell us that that is true. So we can see that's an issue. There's also the is number function. Works similarly. This time it's checking for whether it's a number. If we look for is number over here, that's going to tell us that it's not a number. So if I want to fix this issue, rather than going in and changing these values one by one into numbers, there's an easier way to do that. I can just multi multiply all of them by a value of one. So what I can do is take my value here, which is one, select control C, select these ranges, these values, right click, paste special, and select multiply. So it's gonna multiply these values by that factor of one, hit okay, and now they become numbers. Now we don't have that apostrophe anymore, it's converted them to a number, and now my lookup formula works correctly and it extracts that value. And now I can adjust this and everything works properly. So those are the main reasons why you might come across NA errors. And there's probably gonna be other ones as well, but the, the key thing to remember, it's an issue where something isn't matching to a, a value that you're searching for. There, there's some mismatch along in the way, whether it's a data type or you're selecting the wrong range or it's just simply not found, or, it's a, or there's some extra characters or blank spaces. Although there's a lot of ways that you can fix NA errors, what you may also want to do is just suppress them for the sake of not having to change your spreadsheet completely, or perhaps you just don't have the time to look through all these issues and you just need to get rid of it. So what you can do is use a couple functions. One is the if NA function. So it, you can put your entire formula within there and then say, okay, if it's an NA error, then we're gonna say not found, right? You can set this to blank. You can do whatever you want, but basically if there's an error, it's, it's not gonna display th that error um, that error value, instead you can have control over what it looks like. You can specify a string, a text, or let's say you just want to you just want to leave a blank. Maybe if you've got a value that you need to put, you can put a value of zero to suppress it that way. What you could also do is use the if error function. So the if NA function is only going to work on NA errors, but you can use the if error function. It works exactly the same way and it'll suppress any error, whether it's um, a, an NA error, a value error, a divided by zero error, it's gonna suppress all that. So you can do that as well. Now, the, the main reason you might not wanna use an if error function, however, is that's gonna suppress everything. So if there's other problems in your spreadsheet, then it's gonna mask them, right? You're not gonna know whether that's an error. You might assume that it's because there's an NA error, but what if there's a different type of error, a different issue that you may not may need to look into? If you use the if error function, it's gonna suppress all that regardless of the reason. And so that's the main reason why you may wanna not use it. If you think there could be potentially other errors that you wanna draw attention to, if you know there's a potential that there's gonna be any errors and you're okay with that, you just wanna suppress those specifically, then you can use just the if NA function. But if you wanna suppress absolutely everything and you're okay with the fact that it could be a wide variety of errors, then the if error function will do the job and at least get rid of that for you. And again, you can specify what you want it to show instead of that error, error message, right? So not found or whatever the case may be. So you have a lot of control over that. So that's how we can get rid of NA errors, how we can look for them and why they happen. If you like this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.